only when we are talking about uh, re uh, recruitment, hiring, compensation, and benefit. It's more than that. So what uh, personnel management is now part of HR. So who is that human resource professional? Who is it? So what we're talking about is that that human resource professional provides services to operation manager. They are advocates and business partners. So human resource professionals have specialized knowledge on how to de design, develop effective training programs, how to re design, uh, redesign work roles and organizations to fit changes in technology. Because nowadays, so many things are out there and everything, most things are based on technology. So what do we need to do? We need to now see who is that professional that will help us to get to where we want to be. So how it helps us to decide where quality improvement programs may be beneficial, or we need to throw them out of the organization. We now see that the professional ensures that he covers the activities of the personnel management, a personnel manager, what does he do? He ensures that hiring and promotion uh, decisions are free of what? Discrimination, as the, uh, as, uh, the registrar told us earlier. So why do we want to improve our knowledge or increase our knowledge or sort of expand the frontier of HR? That's why I brought this 10 reasons why I love being an HR professional. One, it gives me the connect. I connect with lots of people. I have the leverage to innovate. I, as, as an HR person, we like helping others. We impact on others. We learn from them and they learn from us. We deploy technology to our advantage. Then we are fluid in our activity. We are not just strategic. We're not, we don't work in silos. We relate with people. We are fluid in our activities in whatever we are doing so that we move. We continuously move to improve one another. This is what we call continuous and never ending improvement. There is novelty in our job. You can hardly see an HR person that will sit in one place. I say, I know it all. So we have variety in whatever we are doing. So it is important that as HR professionals, we do our bit to ensure that we take our organization to that land of promise. So who is the consultant? You know, we, have, we started from the, the personnel manager. Some of us will say, oh, we are personnel managers, but we should graduate from being personnel manager to HR managers. So then before you get to that level, you need to be a professional. Be a professional, know your worth. So now, after being a professional, some of us, within or outside of the organization, we find ourselves as consultant. When we say consultant, some people say, oh, I need to carry the bag and move around looking for job or whatever. You could be a consultant in your organization. So, because there are some, some organizations, they will say, after you are a senior officer or whatever, there is a level that they say you are a consultant. They give you that title. It doesn't have to be from chief to principal, principal to chief before you get to deputy or assistant or some, we just grid some of these people and put them under consultant. That is what is obtainable in some of the climbs after outside of Nigeria. So who is the consultant? The consultant leaves the company with an efficient and productive HR department. He addresses specific issues, specific issues and remains as a retainer until all the issues are solved. Because if he does not solve the issues, next time, then nobody will call him. Nobody will call him because he left them without solving the problem. He should be a solve, problem solver for the organization. He should do a complete overhaul of the organization, human capital, human resource, whatever they have that pertains to human beings in the, in the workplace or the workforce in the workplace. He should be able to, to, to to help them out. So what do we look at? We look at the issue of non-human and human aspect. So if, as a consultant, you should be able to remove the non-human aspect and now face the human aspect of the problems that they have or issues they have in the organization by giving them what advice on the white uh, uh, issues that may take the organization. So it creates and develop human resource model that we fit fit 
good fit for purpose for the organization. Let's let's take an example. Somebody wants to train a, a blue chip organization driver who are not trailer drivers, but because he was successful training Dangote drivers, uh, Dangote truck drivers, he brings the same thing and deploys to that place. I say, oh, drivers are driver. No. So he should be able to do a program or an intervention that is fit for purpose. That is the essence of a consultant. So that will fit the organization that hired him. So if you ensure the workforce is operating at a high level of productivity and efficiency when he's leaving, if not, the organization will not go smiling. I need to, we have a sour taste in his mouth. So this is the, these are the major differences between the personnel manager, the, the professional, the human resource professional, as well as the consultant. Where are you? Where are you in the organization? And who are you to the HR world? So let's look at what I called introduction, what we've been having, I just preamble to uh, a prelude to what we are going to talk about. So how the introduction is, who you as an HR, how do you manage a group of personality or the work habits of your people, of the people that you are working with, okay? Because there's a difference between working with and working for the people you're working with. Because once you are in the organization or you're an HR manager, you're working with some people. Because if you work for them, you see the difference at the end of this presentation. So you are also talking about the performance of people, dependent on their personality traits and job skills. Because some people may have the skills, but their the, the personality is not just it. Okay? Their personality is not just it. This type of people, they may need training. They may need uh, to develop themselves in some other areas based on what we have identified in them as HR in consonance with the L&D unit or department or wherever, whatever they are, or wherever they are situated in your organization. But also to help employees understand their strength and how they can be more successful. We're not talking about job expectations. We're talking about what the individual needs to do in terms of performance, in terms of uh, job schedule, in terms of key performance indicator, in terms of key result areas, we need to help them to get there. So we now decide, not decide, we need to work together with all types of employees in order to reach their potentials. Because if they do not reach their potential, what happens? They jet out. With some, they feel that the only way up is out. If I cannot get to my potential in this organization, what am I waiting for? Like one of my friends who always say that, what is a fine girl like me doing in a place like this? I go out. I look at it. That is why they say the new generation of HR people, they don't stay 35 years in, in service or 60 years of age. Four years is good enough. Three years is good enough. They move. The next time you see them, they will be either assistant manager somewhere while you are still a chief or just uh, an officer in your organization, they move. They use some organization as stepping stone to learn what, uh, to, to move to wherever they want to be. They learn and they move on. So we need to work with them to ensure they reach their potential. We need to blend these personalities to build and lead teams. You know that as individuals, we can work alone. You can work in silos, you need teams. And in teams, you meet different types of people. People that will remind you of someone you will love to forget, but you can't throw them away. They are there. So we need to manage different personalities in the workplace, okay? Putting the right people on the right job and for them to be able to achieve. Because as HR, you can't just be matching up and down. I'm HR, I'm HR. As Walesho Inka will always say, a tiger does not have to proclaim his tigritude. So as HR, one of the reasons we are in this uh, induction today is to get certified, certified in the knowledge of HR, develop some skills on how to help and assist our organizations to get there. And we also now improve our performance as we are improving our own performance, we're also improving the performance of the people that of the workforce that are in the organization. So let's take a look at 
what HR does, a holistic view. HR is in the middle of it all. This, there are some acronyms in there that we are going to break down in the next slide. Salaries and wages, we take care of that. The PPPS, which some people put under admin, we have the she's. She's is not the plural of uh, she, the ILR, all of us know that. So let's quickly get the key to the abbreviations that we got earlier. What are they? We are with the first one, the PPPS. I would say that one is personnel policy, promotion, performance management, and strategy. Okay, some put it this under admin, and admin will now be under HR. Then ILR, industrial and labor relation. Okay, we no go agree, we no go agree. They say go and call, go and call HR for us, for us, so that he will go and palcate those who are carrying placards. We no go agree. Then she is is what safety, health, environment, and security. This is an area that has been in the last two years since the uh, onset of COVID. All HR they've been up in arms against COVID in the workplace safety, the health of the people, because people are talking of mental health, people are talking of depression, people are talking of burnout, people are talking of so many, how do you make the workplace conducive for them? How do you work with, their, uh, with them in terms of their health? How safe is the workplace, security and all, then learning and development will come into place to help us achieve some of this that we have put in place. So now, I will, I, will, I will ask questions, so, so just, I hope some people are not hiding behind the screen. I'm going to get our names and I'll call people. So a cue from the previous slide, let's look at this. What is now employee value proposition? What it simply means is that, what is the employee bringing to the table? And what is the employer bringing to the table to assist the employee to achieve what the organization sets out to achieve. So this is what we have. So employee value proposition is everything that is in that circle. So it involves the benefit, the work environment, the career, the culture, the compensation that the employer brings to add value to the life of the employee. You know, as I always say, the most organizations are out to make profits. Some people say, no, we don't make profit. It's surplus. That is why we are not for profit. But if you are not for profit, well, there'll be something that will be left over that will pay our people. So we need to see what are we bringing? What value are the two sides bringing in, in terms of this EVP that we have there? Some people, when they come for interview, to get the job. After you have asked them everything, I now say, okay, what do you have for us? Do you have any question to ask this panel? And some people will say, mm, yeah, let's take compensation. What will be my what will my pay be like? What if anything happens to me on the job, how will I be taken care of? What will happen to me if I stay here? For 10 years, five years, or whatever, what is the what is the career growth or whatever opportunity for me? So as HR, we will be there or somebody will be there to represent us. We need to know when such question comes. And we need to be ready. Even if we are not asked, tell them, let them know that we are an, a, a, an organization of choice. So when you look at this circle. You see that there are so many, the, the, this uh, benefits, compensation and all, they're broken down into bits with those bullet points. What are those things that you expect in work environment? What are those things that you should do when it comes to career advancement or opportunity for the person? What if something happens to the person in the course of doing his or her job? What is the employee uh, compensation? that will be given to the person. So now this is employee value proposition. Let's see, as an employee, as a, as a member of the of uh, management, 
we should develop a strong employee value proposition as HR, because HR is part of management. An employee value proposition that is key to the recruitment and retention effort. Because the problem we have with HR is that some people have say, oh, when we train them, last year we trained about 20 people, about eight of them left. It seems as if we are just training for the Nigeria market. Yes, we are. That is why we should be able to gather enough effort to keep those people in terms of retention. Because if you keep training them and they don't stay, there's issue with that organization. I see the most basic, an employee value proposition represents everything of value that an employer provides to his employee. And it's the same thing the other way around as well. What an employee brings to the table for that organization to grow. So for the employee, uh, for the employer, it talks about pay, benefits, training, career development, opportunities, and so on. And it will now be what we will tell those who are with us already that this is what you have to gain if you stay with us for this long and you bring in this much. So as a, an HR person, we should we should see ourselves not only being HR or a great person, you should make other people feel great this is the essence of hr now this is another global view of hr activities we talk of global outside whatever is outside happening outside of the shores of nigeria or outside the gates of our organization is considered global global in the sense that nobody ever thought that covid will crawl into the world from that small village in Wuhan. Whether we believe it or not, anything that happens outside affects the, the workforce. Uh, uh, what do we call it now? We say that the uh, uh, cost of living is high. I, ILR in our organization said, let's review the salary. Government has said 30,000 30, is the basic pay or the minimal pay or whatever. So now your organization is still paying 2025. So our organization is in the world global. Anything affects us, everything affects us. So we need to look at it. The environmental, the cultural and geographic, the political, the legal, the economic and the technology. This is a global worldview of HR activities. You will see them, you will look at them and link them with the previous slide that we had. So now what is life cycle? Question time. I want to ask question. Let me see who are the people I have on board this morning. I think I remember, oh, the first person, the beautiful face I'm looking at. Uh, uh, let me quickly go so that they will not see my slide. Let me ask this question. Millicent, Millicent, I can see a beautiful face. Millicent, are you there? Millicent? Millicent? Oh, yes, hi, good morning, I'm here. Oh, yes, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I want to be gender sensitive. That's why I'm calling a woman first or a lady first. So what do you understand by employee, uh, employee life cycle? Do you have an idea? I didn't hear, what did you say, man? Employee life cycle. What do you understand by that? Employee life cycle. Oh, okay. Mm. I think it has to do with um the life um what of uh, of the uh, the life um employee life work life more like a work life balance something. Mm. You are right. In adult class, all answers are correct. You know, but one is the right answer. But all answers are correct. That's why I said, when we started, you said, don't shy away from answering questions. Don't shy away from asking questions. So you are right. Correct. OK. Not <laughs> like, it's, it's more like, um, 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 how, do I, how do I put it? Put it anyhow. Anyhow, <laughs> I'll take it. All answers are correct. Remember that. Break, uh, the employee's time within, um, within an organization, or when you were recruited, when you were on the job, 
then your development on the job, everything that, how you grew on the job and all that. Lovely. Lovely. Melissa, I don't say, say, talk more than that. You got it. So you are not going to ask any any man to, to, ask, to help you out. You got what I wanted and I'm sure that is good enough. Very good enough. And we will now see what employee life cycle is all about. Thank you, Melissa, for the answer. I'm going to call on some other people to give us something. Once upon a time of old, employee life cycle had 11 steps from recruiting, as you rightly said, to separation or exit or retirement, 11 steps, 11. So, but now employee life cycle has gone, uh, it has been compacted. It went into six. It also still starts with recruitment, as Millicent rightly said, your life within the workplace whatever you do within the workplace until you exit, whether you exit at 60 or 35 years in service or four years in the organization, even one year, you just look at it and say, mm -mm, I'm, I don't think I'm cut out for this place. So you move on. You don't want to, you don't stay. So these are the six steps in the, in the 90s or in the, 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 the last century. Hello? In the in the in the last century, it was six steps. I'm sorry, oh baby. It moved from from eleven to six. Okay, I understand. That is part of life of work. Oh, oh, that's... mute your phone. Uh, mute your mic, please. That is the life of uh, women that are working from home. Undo. So what we say here is that in the last century, employee life cycle collapsed from 11 to 6. But now in this new century, it still starts from recruitment to exit. Okay. But now employee life cycle has been compacted further into four. It's still doing the same thing. We're still doing everything as we used to. But now it starts with hiring one at interview, at selection, recruitment, and everything. It's now called recruitment, selection, and everything has now been compacted into hire. How do you hire? Interview and everything. The next one is the person is now with us. You inspire. The person is still with us in the organization. We admire. How do you inspire? You train the person, you bring the person on board, you make the person feel at home that you are already inside of the organization. The third step, which is admire. You follow the person in terms of career development, in terms of helping the person to move and adding value to the organization. You, This is also a part of performance um, appraisal or performance management. You receive feedback from the individual. The individual received feedback from you. So we need to be able to move on. And how do you now compensate that person? Reward system, everything. This is admire, okay? Then the last one, which is retire. Retire doesn't mean uh, until you are gray or whatever. I want to exit. I just feel I've had enough of this organization. I'm moving to higher ground. So what do you want to do at this point as HR? Please ensure you always do what we call exit interview. Why are you leaving? What is wrong? Whatever. You should have something like that ready. Even if the person spent one month, one year, 30 years in your organization, the person is retiring, moving out. So this is employee life cycle, as Millicent, Millicent rightly said, from selection, the life of the em employee within the system until the person exits the organization. So this is also life cycle, preparing people for the fourth industrial revolution, tomorrow's workforce. So, uh, you know, as HR, we know the, uh, what you call the generations, in the workplace. The baby boomers are, are fizzling out. They are out there, but they are still they are still there to advise. They are not, some of them are not in the organization anymore, but they are still 
they still carry their wealth of experience to bear on the organization. So what the new, the next generation of workers or workforce is the Gen X, the Gen Y, the Gen Z, and all of them, different generations in the workplace. So we need to be able to look at it. How do we attract them? How do we recruit them? How do we onboard the new, new generation? How do we develop and retain them? We need to be able to look at this as HR, HR, HR in the workplace. Somebody has a chart for me. Let me see what the person, okay. Okay. Okay, it's not for me here, so it is for all of us. So how do we attract? How do we recruit? How do we onboard? onboard them that is part of what we call orientation getting them to know what the organization is all about and develop and retain these people do not throw them out of the system so as a child what are the expectations what are those things that we expect from the people that we are bringing on board in the workplace so what is it that as in an entrant a, a new entrant what do we do the first year, what is expected of us? What is expected of that person? What should we do to get these people settled in? What is the company expecting from them? What do we expect from the new entrant as well? So this WIIFM is what? What is in need for me? Or what is in need for management? It was in those days that people would say, ah, what is in need for me for me in this organization? Now management is asking, what is in need for management? What are we getting from you? What is your, when you now say, what is in need for me? The organization should be ready to talk about my career progression. What do they have on board for me? That if I decide to pitch my tent here, what would they give me? So expectations on the two sides. So HR managers are the people responsible for this, okay? In conjunction with others like in this system so that they're responsible for acquiring, developing and retaining talent in the organization. So l &D on the other side will assist HR to improve the performance and equip the people or the workers or the employee or the workforce to acquire the necessary skills. Who are these people that are, please put your phone on mute. Let's look at, put your phone on mute. I think I should get the person now. Put your phones on, on microphone on mute, please. So that you are not disturbing others. So we, are, we need to bring the HR and l and together in order to achieve the future for the organization as well as for the for the uh, individual. Now, I want to ask, uh, let me see. Let me see who I want to ask next. What do you mean? Okay, as want, UNDPK as want. That's what I can see. Are you there? As want, as want. Are you there? As want, you see what I said? If we wait till the end, some people will not be there for us. They will have just put their names. Let me see. Aswant is not there. Okay. Kaka Adam. Kaka Adam, are you there? No, Madam Aswant is here. Eh? Aswant. Okay. Yes, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Aswant. Uh, can you give us uh, an idea of what employee burnout is? employee burnout from your own perspective. Don't worry. Remember, all answers are correct. All answers are correct. All answers are correct. Ask me. Are you there? Ask one. Ask one this. Uh, on, Lene. Lene. Eh? Okay, Kaka. Kaka Adam, what do you yes. understand by Kaka Adam? Yes. What do you understand good by uh, good morning? Thank you. Uh, employee burnout. Everybody talks about uh, burnout. Burnout. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, employee burnout uh, simply means like uh, uh, employee getting tired 
of uh, doing a particular job at in a particular uh, level or oh okay you have adam are you there yes i'm with you yeah, yes Hello. okay that's good that's good all answers are correct very good yeah. <laughs> lillian thank you for putting your phone on lillian can you unmute and tell us lillian is she there lillian destiny okay she's not she's not there I'm here. Hello. Oh, Lillian, okay. thank you. Lillian, give us an uh, your understanding of uh, of uh, employee burnout before I, before I will expose this slide. I'm not saying Kaka is not right. Kaka is right. Or oh, adult class, or oh, everybody, you are all correct. You are all correct in adult class. Lillian, Lillian. Uh, okay. Lillian is not ready to answer us. Let's expose the slide and see what. Okay. Hello, Ma. Yes, ask one. Yes, ask one. I'm back. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Ask one. Okay. Ask one. I think it's the problem during um, stable time. Um, for lower productivity and emotional, uh, physical exhaustion. Hmm. Thank you very much. You mentioned one word that is very important, emotional, emotional. It doesn't have to be during uh, times of uh, like the times we are in now, COVID, after COVID and what, or post pandemic, not after COVID, post pandemic, because COVID is still with us. So you are very correct. The two of you are really correct. And uh, we're going to see what employee burnout is. So let's look at it. Employee burnout is a consequence of what you call perceived. It may not be real to others, but some others are working under the same pressure, under the same uh, environment. Why are you talking of burnout? That is why the word perceived is there. Perceived disparity between the demands of the job and the resources. Demands of the job. You have to be there early. You have to do this. And the organization is not giving the resources to get there. So it has now the resources now, both material, physical, or whatever, and emotional. That is why I said, I love the word that as one used, emotional. Okay. The resources should be there for the person to perform well on the job so that you'll be able to do, uh, do what is expected of him, move the organization forward. But the material resources should be there as well as giving, providing the emotional support so that an employee has available at his or her disposal to get the job done. So burnout is like burning the two ends. Your emotional status is on the loose. The other material is not there. So what do you do? You can't perform. So we need to be able to have this to stabilize, like what Millicent said before, the work balance. We're not only talking about work balance now, employee well-being is also part of it. Because you say, I, there's a work balance, yes, but am I well in that uh, employee uh, well-being that is in there? So thank you, uh, uh, Adam and uh, uh, Aswan for the response. Now let's quickly look at the manager's role, that is HR role in retaining talent. We talked about attracting, we talked about developing, but in the course of this, we've done attracting, we've developed, but if we do not retain, they will fly out. How do we now retain? How do we retain our employees? One, you need to recognize them. You need to encourage them. You need to reward them. If you don't, they will jet out. It's not enough to attract them. It's not enough to develop them. It's enough to not cage them in, but put them in there in through what recognition, encouragement, and reward. It's all about the right people on the right job or, or for the right job and at the right time in order to achieve results. Because if they are not there, if you don't retain them, the turnover of staff will be high, very high. And management will wonder, why are we not making, why are we not making it? Other organizations that are in the same business with us are making it. So it's very important that as HR managers, we should be able to be the link between the people at work and management. 
our employees and the workforce with management. And that is what I always refer to in the slide as management, uh, HR is the middle belt between management and the workforce. Once you face the workforce, you are backing management. And once you face the management, you're backing the workforce. So we should be able to link our activities to the success of the organization as well as for the well-being of our staff. So, and in doing this, we need to establish a business case. How do we establish a business case? One, describe the talent implication for internal and external trends. When we recruit people in there, we bring them in, we need them, we need to bring them to speed to know that there are some things that are affecting the whole world and it's also having effect on our internal activities. What do we need to do? We need to now look at it and say, okay, what is the current state of the, of the organization? How well? So that if we keep the people that we are, or the, the, the new entrant, you put them at peace that this is an organization of choice, an organization that we take care of my interests, an organization that will make sure that I get it right. So, and I need to be there for them. Then describe what the future state of this organization is. Because nobody wants to work in a place that will collapse in the next five, 10 months or one year, okay? We should look at it and see what do we need to do. And what we need to do is what? Close the gap skills gap, the gap between the current state and where we want to be, the future state. Because where we want to be is at the horizon and we need to swim across the ocean to get there. So put them in the know. That is one of the ways in which we can retain the talent in the workplace, establish a business case as HR, this is where the work is for us. How, for what, how, whatever. What do we need to do? On the y-axis, you see job performance. This is where job uh, 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 manage, uh, performance appraisal or performance management comes in. On the, put, on the, on the x-axis is what we call the potential. And in the quadrant, you have four types of workers. Those we call the dead wood. We didn't see them as dead wood when we employed them, when they were engaged. We didn't see them as problem children when they were engaged or interviewed. We were looking at them like these are work horses, these are stars that will help us get there. But somewhere in the course of work, sometimes in the course of my it puts your foot, infinite thought, infinite thought, I can see your name. Please, your phone on mute. Your phone on mute, please. Uh, in Phoenix Hot 10, play. Please put your phone on mute. So when we came on board, when we went and got them engaged, we did not see them as dead. We did not see them as problem children. But we now see that in the course of them being, in the course of their life cycle, we have identified them as dead wood. What can we do? Especially for those of us that are in the public service, you know, you cannot just fire anybody. You can't fire. What do you do? You now want to increase or you want to improve the person's job performance, moving from low to high. He has the potential, but he doesn't know. The, the potential is that maybe he has a certificate, he has some whatever, but his performance on the job is not right. What do you need? What do you do? But some people have the job performance, they don't have the potential, maybe in terms of certification. Let's take an example. The example I was I like giving here is that there's this man, he was brought from the outside. He has a degree in whatever, in, uh, uh, in manufacturing and whatever. But there's this man in the, uh, on the job already, he's called Brother Yellow. Brother Yellow knows the job very well but he doesn't have the potential to go to school. They've told him several that, but I know you cannot go beyond supervisor to being a manager because you don't have the potential to think beyond just managing the shop floor, the job itself. Mm -hmm. So, but I know now saw the uh, uncle A that came in as a threat. 
how can they bring in manager over me, supervisor? I've been in this organization for the past 10, 20 years. Why can't they put me? He seems himself, he sees himself as a manager, but he doesn't have the potential. You can't send Boda Yellow out to go and represent your organization where egg eggs are talking. Okay, so what do you do to move such a person from Deadwood or for some people from Deadwood to problem children? They, you know their problem, you can identify and you'll be able to wake them up to be work horses and eventually they become stars. So now you want to move somebody that has good job performance, but does not have potential, uh, but you have seen that this person can, the potential of this individual can be developed so that when you marry the two, the X and the Y together, that is job performance and potential, you have a high performer, performing staff with high potential. So we move them from low to high and from low, whatever job or on potential, we move them and get them to be stars. This is the job of HR. We need to get that right at any point in time. So what do we need to do? As HR, we need to develop what we call a new mindset. And what is the new mindset? One, if you do not see them grow in terms of the career progression, in terms of encouragement, in terms of uh, reward system, in terms of giving them uh, proper um, management, uh, appraisal management or performance management, you will, they will go. Watch them grow or see them go. Some people, are, they don't, they're not patient enough for that. Even if they're patient enough, they see, until I get something better, I will not stop rolling. So the issue that they will always tell them that rolling stone gathers no moss. They say, let me continue rolling. At least I'm not in one place. So what do you need to do as a child? You need to train them in order to close the performance or skills gap so that they'll be able to deliver and envision the future state of the organization. And we need to retain them for business success because when we have high turnover, it is not good for the organization. There's something wrong somewhere. So as HR, let's have that mindset. So the essence of what we're talking about is develop the skills of the workforce in order to get there, whether as HR, professional, whether as personnel manager or the consultant. So skills are very important and skills are broken into two, the soft and the hard skills. We also have uh, functional skills, performance skills and all of them, but they all are broken down into just two major skills, soft and hard. But before you go into skills, identifying the skills, you need to do what? Identify the needs of the employee. Because if you don't identify the needs of the employee, we just be training for training sake. People will just be going for training. They say training will now become like a compensation for a job well done. And that is why when you go to some training places, uh, you see some people, they'll just sit, put their hand or their hand behind their head and be say, when you are done, I'll be, I'm still here. They are in another world when they go for training because they see the training as what? As a place to relax. They just don't bother. So we need to look at it, identify the needs. Will this person benefit from the training I'm sending him to? What will the organization get in return when the person comes back to work? So we need to look at the employee, marry the employee with the, with the performance, look at uh, his, performance, uh, uh, his performance on the job. Are they based on human errors or non-human aspects? So put that in perspective before you send the person for training. So let's now look at skills, soft skills that we're talking about, HR. So we, the soft skills provide foundation for hard skills to reach their full potential. Soft skills are also things that can be replaced by automation. Everybody's talking about AI and whatever. So such things as leadership, judgment, and critical thinking. Yes, they have robots here and there. Like somebody rightly said that by the time they replace a human being with robots in the workplace. All of us will go and stop, uh, study robotics and how to automate and everything. So we started laughing. So in the face of fast and furious change, soft skills help professionals work smarter, not harder. So let's quickly look at the power of skills in order for us to work smarter. So imagine skills without the S, it kills. Imagine it further with the, without the S key, it yields. So an organization performance, an organization performance is either killed or falls ill without skills. 
So you may have capital to jumpstart a business, all the raw materials needed, the dream and the vision, the egg eggs in that place, the bank, bank, a bankable proposal without skills. All these variables will not be actualized. So we need to kit our employees with in the course of their life cycle in the workplace with what skills to get the job done. So before we end, remember that employees life cycle is very important in the course of getting the organization from the current state to the future state. And by closing the workforce or the employees what skills gap so that they will get there. And this falls on the shoulders of HR. The world is talking about fourth industrial revolution. Remember, it is there even before COVID. COVID. Some organizations are ready. They are already facing the challenge of fourth industrial revolution. But what mm -hmm. is fourth industrial revolution? Please, can somebody put, can we all put our phone on mute? Please, microphone on mute, please. Fourth industrial revolution is a fusion of technology. Okay, fusion of technology and human beings getting things done. Physical, digital, biological, and everything. That's why some people feel that the COVID is more of a biological whatever, but some people said it's a technology and whatever it is, we need to look at it that the progress of HR is, uh, I'm sorry, of HR is inch on we being technologically uh, savvy or digitally savvy in order to follow the velocity and the scope at which fourth industrial revolution is catching up on, 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 on the workforce. So we need to be able to look at it. We have never seen such before, like what HR, what COVID has brought to us. It has changed the course of our physical life, our emotional life, our whatever. So we need to be able to look at fourth industrial revolution as one of that. Let us be on speed. So I want to ask a question. Let me let me take this before I ask the question. This is the a, a, a diagram of what how the first industrial revolution moving through the fourth. Under the fourth industrial revolution, see what fourth industrial revolution is: robotics, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, digitalization, automation. Now, you've seen that. I want to ask Irene. Irene College Ogbara, are you there? Irene College Ogbara, are you there? Good morning, everyone. I'm here. Thank you very much, Irene. Uh, now, looking at the fourth industrial revolution that we have on the slide, uh, do you think Nigeria is there? Do you think we're there? No, not yet. Not yet. We're not there. At all, yeah. at all. No, no, no. Okay. In any of these five issues, we are not there at all. Okay, thank you, Irene. Okay. Well, then let's, <laughs> let's take Tade. Is Tade with us in the house? Tade, are you there? Tade, are you there? Maybe he's not. <laughs> Kaka has spoken. I'm not going. Okay, Jumoke. Hola, Jumoke. Are you there? Yes, I'm here, please. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Jimoke. Uh, okay, fine. Fourth Industrial Revolution. Is Nigeria there? We are very far from it. Far. Not even one. So, no, we are not there. Okay, then. So even there's... on the third, the internet technology, this morning we saw we had issues with connectivity. So, yeah, <laughs> we've not gotten the third one yet. Eh? We are not there yet. Okay, yes, Tumiche, Tumiche Jewel, Tumiche Jewel. <laughs> then there is work for us as HRO. Hmm? Tumiche, are you there? I thought at least I would get one person that would say, yeah, somehow we are there. I'm there. Eh, Tumiche, please. Oh, the women, the two women that spoke now said we are not there. What is your own take on this? Yeah. In Nigeria, hmm. robotic, artificial intelligence, Internet of Things, digitalization, and automation. Everybody is looking for people are already in fourth industrial revolution. Tumiche, I think we are the second level there. 
artificial intelligence. Okay. Okay then. Noyen, Noyen TK, are you there? Noyen. Noyen TK. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Okay. Noyen, where are we in this five uh, bullet points? Uh, sorry. I, I was actually logged out and I just came back in again. Like, you think it has been logging me out every, I don't know, after it first came out of me. Okay. I think yes. The host can confirm that. Just allow me in again now. And it's been happening. It's like this time. You see, that's part of what we are saying. That's what some people say that we are not there. That even the Internet of Things, we are not there. Well, some people say we are in. We are in. In some other places, they say that we are in to automation and digitalization. Maybe the area of robotics and artificial intelligence, we are just crawling in. In the last three, they say that we are the internet of things that our people are speeding up in that area and digitalization. What is up to you? Because as HR, where can we pitch our tent in any of this? If they say Nigeria is not in the fourth industrial revolution, then where are we? Hmm? Where are we? Renewable energy, are we there? information, communication, and all. So are we still in the third industrial revolution that was in the early 70s? So please, as HR, let's look at what we can do in this fourth industrial revolution and help organizations to get there. So now let's look at HR in the new economy. You know what uh, COVID brought to us is that, thank you everybody, Irene, uh, Noye, and uh, and uh, who spoke earlier, thank you for answering the question. So let's quickly look at this. COVID brought what people have termed the new normal. People are now moving away from the new normal to the next normal. The new normal will now become normal because people use, even if they say that you don't have to use mask anymore, you just see that you feel incomplete when you get to some places when you don't use your mask. You feel incomplete when you don't have your hand sanitizer in your bag or you quickly get back home and uh, you quickly go and wash your hands. This is now normal. Before it was new normal, things are now, this is what we used to call new normal is now normal with us. People, Irene, please put your phone on. So what we now call new normal is now normal. So people are now looking forward to the next normal. So what do we have HR in the new economy and the fourth industrial revolution? We need to look at the human capital process. We need to look at rigorous recruitment and selection of people that will add value. Galaxy S8, please put your phone on mute. We need to look at how will people add value to what we are going through now? How would they take us from the woods, from the forest into the limelight into the road or onto the road where we need to be the internal career opportunities and competency identification and whatever that we need to we don't have to have skills alone people should have enough competency in order to get us there performance must be stepped up whether we are not looking at the issue of profit sharing or pay for merit like some organizations say that if you're able to bring in this much there's a percentage for you to encourage people to get that. That is part of the reward system, employee engagement and mechanism to be allow, to allow employees here uh, be heard in whatever they're doing or air their opinions. These are some of the rules because like uh, I was listening to the news, I think uh, was this Sky News or whatever news from Beat Britain or something. They said, employees say that civil servants, sorry, said they're not going back to work. Those who want to go to the office, not going back to work, going back to the office. If anybody wants to go, they will go. But they are now going, they are now, they have uh, private bills being sponsored in the House of Commons. Uh, you don't have to force me to go to the office. I can work from home. It's now part of me. I can't just imagine myself going back to the office. Yes, we can come once a week to, to sort of... Um, mingle and know the people that I'm working with. That is why some people have developed what we call 25-25 is equals to 100. 25-25 is equals to 100. That is 25% of the workforce working for the 25% of the time in order to get 100%. That type of mathematics is what HR should look at. Some, some places 
Yes, some places they say work from home, remote working and all. You need to look at this. This is the new economy that we are working in. So, and the area of industrial revolution. So career management, then digitalization of what, uh, of the workplace. So we need to be able to look at it. This is what the future of work uh, is bringing to us. So the HR in the new normal and during and post COVID, will there be post COVID? COVID is living with us. So it's post pandemic we'll talk about. It will not be a pandemic anymore. Like uh, somebody said, it will now be from pandemic, from epidemic to pandemic, and it will now be endemic. So that is whatever meek it is, but COVID is now with us. So we need to look at it and say, like what we have now, what we are doing today, before it used to be that all of us will have gathered from those from Port Harcourt and everywhere, will have gathered to be where? To be physical. You find yourself running to the airport or whatever, you'll have traveled. But now every, most things, most trainings are what? Virtual. People are de deploying money to technology to ensure that we receive or we get better results. Health, safety, environment, and security is getting more funding than it used to be. Work from home is now is now is now part of the normal. Okay, people don't want to go back to the office because they can take care of the office as well as take care of their homes when they work from home. Job schedules have changed. Deliverables and strategies and timelines have changed. And this is what HR is looking at. Performance measurement has also changed. So that is why it has given HR extra activities. How do we measure performance of people that are working from home? Give it a thought and let's look at what can be done. So it is very important. So for the future of work, we need skills like emotional intelligence, critical thinking, creativity, innovation, and activity or growth, new great mindset to put ourselves in whatever we're doing. So put yourself out there as HR that we can adapt to the situation where we find ourselves. So HR in the new normal and key to success. First, top management must have a buy-in in whatever we're doing or else we just see ourselves working at, working at crossroads will not be able to achieve and align our process. We should link all HR efforts to needs and strategic objective of the business. We should learn as HR to lead through change. Change will continue to come, okay? Like some people just looked at it and said that uh, change, uh, COVID is, comes to its uh, peak in during dry season, Amatana, or during cold season. So when such change comes, what do we do? We should embrace diversity. Diversity in the area of what? Age or demography, education, whatever diversity brings into us. So what do we need to talk about? We need to talk of diversity and uh, diversity and inclusion. Diversity and inclusion. I didn't know that my video was off. So diversity and inclusion with what we should look at, whether in terms of age or whatever, bring them in and let them be there. So then leading inclusively, bringing people to assist you to achieve. Leading virtually, you need to be there, whether you are physical or online, let them see you that you are there. So you have to also what we call brutal honesty about reality. Reality in the sense that COVID, let's take the example of COVID. COVID will be with us, whether we pray, or we fast, it will be watered down to either to whatever. And people, once they say, oh, what do you have? Oh, okay, COVID, okay, go and take care of yourself so that you don't spread it and all that. So reality is with us that the new normal is now normal. That's the reality. We are looking forward to the next normal. What will come out of all of this? Credible, inspired hope that, yes, there's hope that we get there. So emotional intelligence as HR, we need to have the agile mindset. We need to be customer centric because it's the customer that we take us to wherever we are. The stakeholders must be carried along in whatever we're doing. Then as HR, we should be digitally savvy and enable it. Any HR that does not know anything about uh, computer or technology and all those is not, is not it. So as HR, we have to settle in 
to know that human beings are not human capital. Human beings are not human resources. Because when you look at that from the layman's point of view, human capital, capital is something that you use and dispense of, it's finished. You can recoup, but at that point, you throw away. Resources, you finish using and you get for another resources. Treat your people, employees as human. Feel for others. Involve others in whatever you're doing. Speak to and see the other's point of view. Hear them out. Have the listening ear. This is what we call the fish model. The fish model. Because the rich also cry. So once you feel for them, you know that it's the same blood that runs in your vein that runs in their vein. The rich also cry. We remember that we are all human and we need to get there. So what do you do? Use this model, people approach, in order to get the, your, your employees or your colleagues, whatever you refer to them in the workplace, to get them focused on what we are all here to do. People now becomes an acronym for professionalism. That is the essence of why we are here. That is the essence we are here, to be professional, be empathic in whatever you are doing. Give them the optimism because you should show the optimism yourself. You should partner with them so that you get their loyalty. Engage them and empower them to deliver on what we have to do. As HR, we talked about connection, connect, part of our agenda earlier. If you look closely at this guy, you see the end, the edge of this uh, computer uh, uh, line, whatever they call it, that we slot into our computer, uh, in, in our computer, uh, maybe in those days when we used to uh, use the uh, cable to get uh, internet. You see, but for whatever it is, it's giving us a message. You should connect. So as HR, are you wired to connect? with your employees, with your with the workforce. Don't see yourself as standing out. You are part of the system so that the business will be relevant. Be ready to connect with your people. Be kind for everyone you meet is carrying a heavy load. That is the essence of what? Employee wellness. That is the essence of employee work-life balance. Everyone you meet is carrying a load. If you do not put them together, use all what we have said, and you just find the institute has said what they need to say. You file everything away. That means you want to kill your organization. That is the skull and the crossbone. Or you just dust your hand and say, I'm done. You are putting everything away. That is failure on the part of HR. So we need to be able to get there and see that we don't dust off everything. At one point in time, you come back to these slides and see, what have I learned? What are those things that, I've taken, that I'm taking away from the, this uh, presentation? We need to look at it, be professional. Show the world that you're a member of Chattered Institute of human resource management, and that's the place to be. There'll be inductions, there'll be trainings, there'll be whatever to upgrade whatever we have learned today. So thank you for listening. Here to discuss one or two things. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. So if you have any question in the next five minutes, I will take your questions so that we can continue with the induction proper. Mm -hmm. Okay, somebody says, uh, I'm, I'm, I want to scroll through the our chat room. Okay, Uluta Day says, please, I want to quickly write down the full meaning of fish. Fish, okay, and having network issues. Okay, so she wants to see the full meaning of fish. So question, question, do you have any question? Are you hearing me? 
Or am I talking to myself? We are hearing hear you, man. I hear you. Too. I'm afraid. I was afraid. I was afraid. Okay. The person that wants the full meaning of fish. This is it. Feel for others. Involve others. Okay. Involve others. Okay. Speak and do whatever. Then hear them out. So, okay. Question time. Discussion time. Okay. I hope uh, Noyem has seen this. Okay, you can you can take a screenshot of it. Okay, I have my hand raised up. Okay, Irene. Yes, thank you, Irene. Yes. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Okay. Um, I was just going to say thank you for this wonderful presentation. I mean, it's blown my mind and opened it to a whole lot of responsibilities we have as HRs. I was also going to ask, um, can we have this slide as part of what will be sent to us? Mm -hmm. Something we really need to like understand, digest, and really... <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> You're going to have the slides. What, uh, at, at the end of all our presentations, we send the slide to, to everyone. And that is part of what I said earlier. The last slide before the thank you was that please, this one, failure will be on our part if we just take whatever we have said and they said whatever they need to do. Go back and see what are those things that are challenging in what we have talked about in the area of uh, future. What are those challenging things that I can work on on my side as HR? Thank you, Irene, for that. You will have the slides, yes, you do. All right. Thank you, ma'am. Any other question? Okay. If there are no questions, I'll stop sharing my slide so that uh, we can... Maybe I'll just give them the fish once again. Just give them the fish again. The fish. Okay, let me share. Let me go. Let me go to my slide. Okay. Have you seen? Yeah. You are there? Yes. Okay. You can see that. I'm sure they can um, pick that. I know it's feel for them, involve them, speak for others, hear them out. If you can just get that, it's, um, it, will, it will help. Hello? Yes, Lillian. Hello? Sorry, good morning. My I am sorry. I've actually been trying to battle with my baby and oh I'm so so sorry. I'm not really active here. No problem, Lily. Okay. Um, yeah. I didn't I actually didn't um join in on time, so I was just trying to catch up on um the things you were saying, but then I think I lost um a lot. I, I was actually behind because I came in late and I'm so sorry for that. But then you said you're going to um make the slides available, so I'm counting on that too. But then I have a question. Hello? Hello, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, okay Ma. My question is this, I actually have a background in um, public relations, and then coming out to like teach into um, HR, I need to find both roles, like they're conflicting in a way, and similar to, um, I don't know, I tend to look at the, the PR role and the HR role, and most of the time I see similarities, and then I see um how do I put it? I uh, see differences as well, and then um where I actually uh, my last job I had to combine both roles, and most of the time I even wonder if I'm a PR person or a HR person, and I, actually that was what propelled me to get in trying to get um a certification in HR. I I don't know. I want you to really um, explain to me much more. I don't know. PR, HR, are there any similarities actually? Because I don't think both are the same from the teachings I've been having here and then what I'm expected to do in the office. I have to combine public relations role and human resources role. I don't know. I just want a little bit of an explanation here to clear me. I'll be glad, ma. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Let me, uh, I'll call on um, with some people to uh, also uh, fill in the gap. But my own understanding of PR, PR is that you deal with the public, you do whether internal or external public, you deal with them. But one thing about PR is that you will use your knowledge of PR to work with the employees in the workplace. You use your knowledge of PR, you know, let me quickly see at the beginning, let me see, at the beginning there was this slide that we said um, that your role is global. I think this, this, if you look at this, you see that you'll be able to use your PR in any of this, if you find, except maybe technology, I don't know where our technology savvy you are, but when you're talking of the, the resources, the people, the global environment and the geography, you need to, as well as the political, okay? As a PR person, you know how to manage the public and the public has your organization in there. Inside the organization, you have the work. Force. So how do you marry? What you need is more of HR in order to balance the technical aspect of, of HR. You need that because, and that is the essence of why you are here in the first place. Learn those technological, oh no, sorry, the technology. learn those, um, the technical aspect of HR. What are those things? So groom yourself more on HR because there is a, a, a world of difference between the two, but your PR knowledge will help you to have a smooth sail into uh, into uh, HR, okay? Because you cannot be talking public relation when you are talking HR. HR will help you in the world of, uh, the, in the corporate world. PR will also help you, but you need more of HR to be able to function very well in the corporate world. But PR is a smooth sail into it, okay? So, but please go go get more of HR, which will help you. PR, we are not, of course, of course, if you already have the, the, the foundation that you can build on, okay? So I don't know whether there's anybody that has something for Lillian to help us get there. Okay. Hmm? Uh, I'll Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Okay. My, bro right. my brother, please. Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay. Once oh, Aswan has... Again, a applause for uh, their facilitator. Aswan has, Aswan has his hand up. We didn't take him. I'm sorry about that, Aswan. No, you, but as well, you asked. Is there person? nobody? Okay, it's okay. It's all right. Okay, you can put your... Um, you can no, let him ask his question. There. Let him ask his question. No, he's, ask he's trying to call. Are you there? Aswan, are you there? I'm here. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, Ma. I really appreciate the emphasis on this topic. And I think one of the important things that you mentioned was the burnt out issue, which I feel it's really critical and affecting the profession. Um, most of the times, as a HR personnel, you're making recommendations on young talents and try to see how they can come up. But you're having um, bottlenecks from the management perspective. So how do you deal with that? Yeah. Because me? right now, sorry, Mark, right now we're looking at the global uh, expansion of technology. And I think technology is driving almost all the aspects of, um, of, of, of our life right now. And now when you are looking at seeing young talents that understand the technological aspect of it that can also help drive the company or the organization to uh, the top level, and you're making recommendation, but meanwhile the people at the top are saying, no way, how do you do that? And they expect you to perform. <laughs> And you know, the thing is that I think there was one of my slides where I said, the first thing you do is ensure you get management buy-in. In whatever you do, people will always say, I don't want to play politics. There's politics everywhere. 
the human life is politics. So you have to learn to play the organizational politics in order to get the job done. If you have to, you know, as I say that HR, we're part of management, we are in the boardroom. If you have to get organization that are in similar business, what we're doing, try bring such example into the work or who are doing better than your own organization. You bring them in and say, okay, it's, uh, it's rather unfortunate that I have to do this. You first of all, clear the ground and see this organization. You will have armed yourself with enough facts and figures to be able to tell management that we, should, we are not where we are supposed to be. We should be better than this. And that is why I'm bringing this and whatever. Let's rework some things and let's even give it a timeline. You know, when you're talking of strategy, you're talking of whatever, you give yourself a timeline and say, this timeline, let's see, let's even work this out and see what can be achieved within that time. Give me time and I'll get there. So work out that thing, bring some other organization to bear. They may not want to be compared with others, but bring organizations that are doing better than yours arm yourself with whatever you need to give yourself timeline, get your framework and templates and everything ready. So that they say, hey, okay, yeah, if you want us to do this one, how much will it cost us? So it may not cost us anything. We're going to use whatever because one thing management doesn't want to hear is money. You are going to deploy more money. No, 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 no. But we are using the same resources, the same people to get the result of what we want. So because management, they don't want to hear don't you know how the country is? Don't you know this? Money, just take money out of it. Within the budget that you are giving, work out something, get yourself ready. As they're asking, you are giving them. As they're saying, say this. And you have some people that you have already highlighted, that you have already uh, put in one, in a parking bay that will help you to achieve. It is not when management now says, okay, go ahead and do it. They now start running around. Who will help me do this? You have done everything. Minus money. Minus new money. Because you have money in your budget. So you find a way of looking for something within your budget to achieve. And once you're able to achieve, honestly, they will go. I'll give you an example of before I retired, we were going to have a, a review vision. A review vision of my organization there. They say, ah, we are going to spend money, a lot of money. People, the people, the egg eggs, the people that know whatever, they put everything and say, we are not going to change the structure. We are not going to do anything. We're going to use the same set of people to achieve our result. And honestly, we did. We became the darling of, of the federal government then. Much money. No money was used. Later on, the money was deployed because they said, we've seen we seen something bigger than what was reviewed. It's usually an idea of someone that will bring forward and get there. But the first thing you need to do is to get management buy-in. If you don't, they will kill, the, they will kill your, your brilliant ideas. Remember we said that I love creativity and innovation, one of the 10 aspects of being there. So you have to learn, please, play the politics of the organization if you don't. If you don't play the politics, you will not get there. So when people say politics, is a dirty game. You have to learn. Even at home, at home, amongst our children, within our spouse, we play the politics. So please learn to play the politics and you'll get there. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mama. You can contact the, the institute. They will help you out on how to get this done. Okay? Thank you, Aswan. So, Mr. Gideon, back to you. All right. All right, ma'am. Thank you very much, ma'am. All right. Awesome. Lovely. Thank you very much, ma'am, for that time. Thank you very much for uh, the detailed explanations given on all your subheadings. And um, I want to tell you sincerely, like um, the registrar said the last time, um, I think it's quite a time we need to begin to look at how to... Um, work together to take to some international fora for some kind of delivery. Because, no, 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 no. Because beyond the shores of Nigeria, um, first of all, I've been privileged to be in one or two places too. And when I hear people talk, I'll just say, ah, I wish it's um, Madam that is doing this. Then they will see difference. Mm -hmm. But um, I know it's still going to happen. Let's just keep our fingers crossed. And um, I believe that Registrar is working on something. 
who support him in that area and make sure that he happens. Once again, man, thank you very much for the deliverables. Thank you very much. We appreciate thank you, man. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. All right. On this note, um, I want to just uh, see how we run this because when we come for induction like this, we don't just do it for, um, we try to also network. We try to let us know who are who are on the platform, who are who are on board. And uh, on that note, uh, we'll be having our introductions, meaning that everybody here will have to introduce themselves. Sorry if I have to make mention of um, your phone instead of your name, because some of us here, you have your phone type and your phone brand instead of your name. All right. But the way it goes, you just tell us your name. Tell yes, us. Um, can you put on their video? So that we see their faces. Yes, I'm going to just say that now. Yes, sir. I'll do now, um, please, can you click your video? Put your video on. Everybody, please, let's have your video on. Video on. But when I call your name, click your mic, put it on. So it won't feed when somebody is talking. But put all your videos on now. All videos on now, please. Just your microphone can be muted. So that when somebody is talking, it will not uh, feed while somebody is talking. All right. So you tell us your name. You tell us um, who you are and what you do in that place, in that uh, um, organization. That means your name, what you do, and where you do what you do. Your name, what you do in that organization, and where you do what you do. I am social person. I am this in that organization. I work in social organization and I am this. That's what we want to know. Thank you very much. And please um, make it very brief and clear. Let people understand what you are saying. Thank you. On that note, um, in no particular order, I have uh, Angelina Obinwa, please. Angelina Obinwa, please. Can I have you? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, now. I'm sorry, my camera is quite blue. Let's go ahead. Okay, my name is Angelina Obinwa. I'm the HR business partner. I work with Eslo Nigeria Limited. All right, thank you very much. Please, let's try to use, um, don't let us use bedroom voice. Let's use um, generator house voice. You know, when you are by a generator house and you want to talk to somebody in the 